Mm. That was a pretty good one. How do we get a How do we get a nine? I don't know. Oh. Rate my crack. <laughs> rate my Maybe pop. Shake it up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> a nine might. That was decent. It's a good one. You spilt on your computer. Yeah, there you go. Every we're gonna time. need. You know, some. We're gonna need wipe it off. So the clean the it up. The, the bigger the spill, the bigger, bigger the mess. No, no. What? Not the bigger the spill. I mean, not a not a. I mean, we don't need to bring props into this, right? Not an on purpose spill, but like you know, thing really kind of busted off. Like right if there. Stone Cold came in here and opened a beer, that'd be a that'd be a, like a <laughs> nine eight, <laughs> right? <laughs> and everybody would be wet. That's oh my god, Kane! <laughs> it's the rattlesnake. Jeez, three sixteen. <laughs> that leather vest and those Just double <laughs> knee braces, <laughs> black underwear. <sighs> Didn't take long to get. <laughs> To get into the wrestling, huh? <laughs> well, I mean, it's the closest thing to the combine. <laughs> Underwear Olympics. There you go. It's, what is it? Staged? Is that a segue? I mean, it could be. You never know. Well, this whole thing could be staged. Everything you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Truman Show. All, <laughs> yeah. all the way around. Only guy who's uh, who really knows what's going on is Brad Keselowski. Yeah. What's up, Brad? He's got two for your crew. He's drinking Miller Lite, though. Yeah. Actually, I don't think he's with Miller Lite anymore. No, no. Did he move on, Casey? You're about. You're all about some <laughs> I mean, uh, fantasy I NASCAR. Have, I have. Uh, I have joined a fantasy NASCAR slash fantasy golf. Did uh, you? Did you win the golf league on Sunday? I won the golf league first golf I was in, and I I took that one down. First week and, you played fantasy golf, and you won. Yeah. Third week I've played uh, fantasy NASCAR. I I came in second this week. I was. Really crushing it the week before, and then Ryan Priest crashed going into pit, <laughs> into the pits or coming out of the pits, and really, really chapped my hide. I would have, it was in for some money. He Would got you look me. at that. How do you crash but coming out of the pit? Had Keselowski this week. He he did well for me. Well, you should have Keselowski every week. Just well, because. I had him the first week. He let me down at Daytona, and then the next week he did well. And so the th- did he up. let you down because he was in the crash, or he let you down because he didn't drive well? Well, just all around. Mm, had a bad uh, motor. I for, maybe he's with. FedEx, I don't, I don't quite remember. I, I, I just, I tune in periodically, just, obviously, just to check in. But FedEx can't get around the track fast. Come on, man. <laughs> so I Jason. mean, he's been good. He's been, he was good at Vegas last weekend. The good, good. Uh, so those new uh, Amazon vans riding around took yeah. the gas right out of FedEx. Right. And APS. <laughs> right. I had the new Aero and engine packages working this week. <laughs> so that was exciting. I don't Casey. know what that means, but <laughs> Casey knows nothing about <laughs> engines. And the new engine package. No, they did. Week. They did. They re- they they changed the way that they're that they're doing NASCAR and the way that the the aerodynamics and the all this other stuff and the that Daytona was restrictor plate and they weren't allowing any of that and then they've been slowly working into this new deal they got going on more horsepower all oh, well well obviously let's get more horsepower that was my tool man take those stupid restrictor <laughs> plates off and less r- rubbins race and let's go <laughs> that's not it. exactly street legal <laughs> keep that on the dl how did, was it anything better than tim the tool man when mm-hmm. you were growing up just no his, i mean maybe uh pamela anderson well i mean he had well he had quite the the slew of assistants including al al was shop ladies. hot in his own right all right flannel beard <laughs> Really crushing it. Come on now. <laughs> I was I was what? pinned yeah. to the TV seeing if we were going to get a shot of the neighbor's face over the fence. Ah, uh, Wilson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was the best. I'd be I'd be bummed if that was me. And you never saw my face on TV. It was uh, an accident. It what the show wasn't written like that. But when they uh, shot the first uh, shot the pilot and then they started the film and they're like, well, the fence is too tall because <laughs> Wilson's hitting. that thing isn't code. And then it just <laughs> no. And then they didn't get a permit for that tall fence. Yeah. And uh, they just rolled with it. They were like, "Oh, this is cool. We'll play into this." And then obviously, howdy ho, neighbor Tim. Probably the only reason people care about the neighbor had a cool, other than it's just wonderful theory. Had a cool car, always cooking in the garage. Had cool gadgets, even though they never worked right. They never it's worked just, right. Always blew the backside of that garage out when something didn't. <laughs> yeah. Forgot to. The boys were always break. looking one way, and it shot out the other. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know about Tim the Tool Man Taylor, you do some do some YouTube and oh a little JTT on there, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. He was the heartthrob prince, I guess. He wasn't quite a king at that point. He's more of a prince. Well, it's two shots. I think like he peaked. Guys I think he peaked. In that he, show, he, did, so. he may have peaked too early. Yeah, mm. may have peaked too early. That's a good call. Yeah, but I mean, he's probably still straight. I mean, Macaulay Culkin peaked way too early. He's straight. He just got a Google commercial, but wasn't it because he's awesome? Who Macaulay? Yeah, yeah. This is a Home Alone. 
thing coming yeah. back around. It's good for them. Just good writing in general from Google. All right. Well, combine season is it? We had a decent segue and then it just got off the rails. Yeah. It was like Tim the Toolman Taylor building a gadget. It just things got way too much horsepower. When it starts off with wrestling, it's going downhill. Hey, hey, hey. That was was golden age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These guys. That's a golden age of wrestling. I started following the 90s WWE on Twitter. It's good. How could you not? Ah, I fucked up. I need to be be following (laughs) like late 80s and early 90s. That's more your wheelhouse. I'm I'm more of the, I like the mid, mid, mid to late 90s wrestling. I I need early 90s. Y'all boys are dumb. JR. I'm staying. I, I mean, Lex I, I was. Luger, Rick Flair, I was just a little Steiner younger brothers. than you were. My brothers watched some wrestling. Yeah. My, it was. It was. My mom did not like wrestling. I'll date myself. I I was a Road Warriors fan before they started being called Legion of the Doom. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there you go. If you didn't know, that puts you mid thirties. Oh, we're getting negative reviews here. <laughs> no, this community <laughs> loves wrestling. What are you talking, talking about? about? The new guys. They live. They live in fantasy world. So the guys that tuned in for wrestling. this title of this podcast are very upset. Are Whatever. Very it's combine week. It's just as made up as wrestling. It's true. Well, the results are nobody. Oh, right. Nobody came off the top. So what did you guys? Th- they didn't, and it would have been way big. Way Rich better. Eisen's maybe the highlight of the combine. Raised true. Record Always. breaking amount of money for uh, St. Jude's. Good for him. Good Always. platform for him to to do that for. For sure. For sure. So because the forty yard dash is the most important thing. Any ever. right? Any uh, any big big takeaways from from this combine for you guys? Any anybody rise or fall for you? You guys get excited about anybody? I'm going to backseat to this. I'm going to let you guys go at this for a second. because Wow. I don't watch the combine because I don't want to get a bias on how good guys are running around in their underwear. <laughs> that's, see, that's, that's the uh, the hucklebuck there. Yeah. Because that's what the, the analytics guys say. They don't watch film right. because they don't want to develop a bias right. on a guy being good at... Thank you for explaining my... Yeah. Well, we didn't get a, we didn't get a rouse out of Big yeah. Co over there. Big so. Co didn't like it. No, I liked it just fine. It's just it, it does. It, it's it's I I used to enjoy the combine more. Still enjoy the combine, but you know, I over, really enjoy it. It's fun to watch, yeah. but it's but, really annoying how much it means to people. Right. The people take it way too seriously, they're thinking that they can take somebody's right. shuttle time or whatever and decide if they and and there's I get it. If you got there's a certain number, I mean, you're you're not going to run you're this not gonna do, going to do going to the spreadsheet. You're not going to do a 10.83 cone drill and be a good running back. Mm-hmm. I get it. That's I get it. But you can't tell me that somebody but ran somehow DJ Metcalf's going to be eight, the first wide receiver off the board. 800 of a second faster or slower than another guy and this guy's good and this guy's bad because he didn't did, you know. Yeah. Like again, I just, yeah. 2 years 3 years ago they told me Dalvin Cook wasn't going to be a good running back right. because he wasn't good at the combine. Throw it all like, away. Let's just let's Throw that back in there. The highlight for me was listening to Joe Thomas. I mean, he's he's just a treat. Did work for you? you yeah, like that good. Joe good, Thomas is good. Good camera face. You know, good. Good strong, strong smile, jawline. No de- no dead air. Always yeah. Always coming with knowledge. I like I like Joe. Good well, voice. He's gonna crush. I think he's. I think they're they already grooming gave him, the job. him. Yeah. Yeah. I like. I, I'm down with some Joe. Yeah. Down with some Joe. Well, I mean, there was obviously a couple. Standouts. We'll go mostly running. Talk about mostly running backs because we haven't gotten into the uh, receiver side of things. We're ten to twelve running backs uh, deep into at least the film evaluation side of things. And I, I understand some of the combine excitement for the people who rely mostly on the analytics and or the the guys who like is the more approach that I enjoy is weaving the two of saying, you know, well, there's a certain percentage of guys in the league who have this score. And if you're in the low percentage of if you're in the, you know, you're not low percentage of X score, you're not don't have as good of a chance to to make it. And I exactly I get it. Exactly. That's, it's, but I at the same that. time, like I don't I don't need the combine to, to tell me what, what's going on. I mean, you, you can look at Miles Sanders or Justice Hill on tape and realize that them boys are athletic. That they're they got some twitchy movements about them. That's going to result to some good combine numbers. Like right. you can, if you can't see that on the field, right? So maybe you shouldn't watch. I got a guy like Mike Weber surprised yeah. a lot of people, but well, I, I mean, I called you that morning before they started running forties. I got up early and was watching some Mike Weber, and uh, he, uh, I was like, I called you up and I was like, man, this guy looks pretty fast. He's out there out running guys, like pretty intrigued. And then he comes out and runs a four four seven, and now there's proof. So. So, right, but you couldn't see him out running guys on the field. Right. He, he afterwards he tweeted, but I thought I wasn't fast or right. something along those lines. But I, I don't slow. think he, I think he left the combine after. No, that. yeah, I think the, he dropped the mic. I don't think do he really did else. anything else. See you later. <laughs> he just kept on running. Yeah, 
<laughs> That's a little Forrest Gump there. Yeah, I mean, he did the vert and he did the bench press. But I'm, yeah. That was it. I've been just breaking into a little Mike Weber, and I, I, I like what I see there. Strong running back. I don't know why he doesn't have more lull to his luster to his uh to his name. You know. Yeah, because there's just no there's nothing sexy there. There's not a lot of big big runs. Not but a lot of. He does everything that I want to see a running back do. Absolutely. Um. So we'll not get too carried away with Mike Weber, but that was a guy who probably moved up some radars of not being. And uh, I think Ray Rayquan Ray Ray Quell. Rayquell Ray Armstead, Quell, yeah, really moved. Uh, maybe caught some people's eyes, and I've been watching some film on him. And that man is all gas, yeah, just all gas. He's he's re- he's one of the. There's not a whole bunch of guys on here who on their film just straight run away from people. And there's a decent amount of examples of him running away from people. His forty time was, I think, the second best. Yeah, um, four four five, just a. Uh just behind Justice Hill. And hadn't gotten around to the guys who were, were a little bit lower on the list. So once he sh- came up with a fast 40, I checked him out. And yeah. He's a bit bigger guy, which is a lot of these guys are smaller framed. And uh, so that was good to see. He's fun tape to watch. It's not a lot of... Uh, I think he's from the same place as uh, the, the guy for the Angels. Uh, Trout. Mike Trout. Mm-hmm. I think huh. I'm from maybe the same hometown. Would you look at that? Uh, Millville, New Jersey. So 5'11", 220 for, for Armstead there. Fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, some some good power. There's some holes to his game. All gas. I mean, that's that's Basically, when I watch him, it's just like he's just shot, going. He's shot he out of a just cannon. going. He looks like he's in fast forward sometimes, and sometimes it's really great yeah. that he's in that. Seems like he's in that, and sometimes you wish there would be a little bit more pause to what he's doing. But nonetheless, nevertheless, fun to watch him get out there and run ha, was had a lot of nicks going through when you watch the tape you can always hear him about the ankle this or that and this it hasn't been quite the same since then so uh definitely a guy who's uh creeping up and want get a little more in depth with him i think he might creep up a little bit for me there sure, sure. anybody for you i mean i i don't know i don't know that any of this really swayed me i mean you have to take a little closer look at miles sanders because of how much everyone's just clamoring oh, yeah. about him and he definitely improved his stock, I'm sure, in the overall. Oh, 100%. Of I mean, he's he's RB1 or to RB3 for every, you know, everyone yeah. wants to make the argument that he's somewhere in that range now, which almost nobody had him in that range. Yeah, and I'm um, good on that. Yeah, me too, I'm, for sure. If he's going to go there, I'm probably not going to have much Miles Sanders on my team. Right. Because, well, like, we've, we've done a, a fair amount of study into him. We're about to do some Miles Sanders uh, probably this weekend over on Patreon. And so we'll give you a good breakdown there and maybe do a little vi- another video breakdown, too. Um, so, so be on the lookout for that. But, uh, I mean, there, he's got some holes in his game, too, that I, that I really don't like parts of it. And, and I don't know if it's going to translate immediately to the NFL. Now, right. he's got some really good stuff, too. Yeah, he's got some great stuff that, show, that, showed, up, that showed up in the, in the testing here. Absolutely. And some people were questioning his long speed, and his long speed came out to be fairly good and there are some examples of him running away from people yeah on tape yeah i mean um, he can bust big big plays off but he's sure, a perfect but. example of if he's going to be up in that rb1 rb3 talk yeah that, that's going to be that's movement for me like not in like the sense of excitement the sense <laughs> of i'm going to be moving down draft boards right every time that miles sanders is still on the board I'm going to be sending out offers because I want somebody's going to want Miles Sanders more than I want Miles Sanders. Yeah, especially if he's going to be projected as the one because he's he's like basically the re- reasoning behind it is he's the only guy who tested real mo- one of the only basically the only guy who tested really well at a semi prototypical size that you want for your NFL guys. So automatically, of course, he's got to move up to the one to three, which I get it. There's definitely. Uh, some athletic upside to his game and he's he's not terrible to watch but i'm not drafting him in in that area for me he's not in the one through three range for me no nah, so not i'm at all. that's that is immediate for me it's the alarm goes off and i'm i'm moving uh out of picks out. when Miles sanders is on the clock and and i don't want anybody that's on the board because i mean but obviously, this is a conversation that's going on before the NFL sure. draft. I mean, obviously, the if easy some, answer here is if the Chiefs draft Miles Sanders, then get, okay, then I, I get pay, then I get excitement. Right? <laughs> yeah, I want lamp. Right. Yeah. I sure. Want the Chiefs lamp. Right. Whoever the Chiefs lamp is. Right. That's <laughs> we talked about that on Patreon. Like, <laughs> if you're a receiver right? for the Saints or anybody on the Saints, I'll I'll and it was lamp. I'll take lamp. If, if you're a receiver <laughs> or a running back on the Chiefs, 
I'll take I'll take lamp. Right. Like, give me give me that guy. Give me the give me the desk lamp that's right. on the Chiefs. Uh, but whoever's on the Chiefs for the most part, I'm probably going to be out on as expensive as Miles Sanders is seemingly going. Yeah, I would agree. Anybody, you, Big Co, you agree? Disagree? I mean, just like kind of what you just said, if, the, to have his size and to test the way he did, it makes you double check, makes you look back at him, and then and then you got the people that says, well, there's no chance we could see much of him last year because of Saquon. So that check that adds up. Get that? I see the logic there. Um, so yeah, I'm looking for to see what the NFL talks thinks about him. That like uh, again, I I went heavy in the paint with Alvin Kamara a couple years ago just because the Saints have been crushing their draft picks and they gave they gave up a two. People say, well, he got drafted in the third round, but they gave a next year's two. The Saints told me their value for Kamara by giving away and. You can line it up with aging Drew Brees, so they need to go all in and try to get their their pieces now. So let's. I'm trying to see what happens with Miles yeah, Sanders in the draft, just like everybody else. To is, your point but, there, I'm not. I'm not taking every running back that a team moved up and sold sold something else, sold the next year's pick to get. But when it's a team like the Saints, they're just super you get smart. Really exactly. Excited you about just it. yeah yeah exactly. If if somebody if. Uh, the Titans, per se, or somebody would any 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 team not named the Saints or the Rams or the Niners or somebody like that makes a move on a running back it doesn't really get you as excited as when the Saints, you know, right. Sean Payton. Okay, and got you. We were this podcast was much higher on um, Alvin Kamara than I think probably most people. A decent were amount of people at, anyway. at the time, but pre-draft anyways, yeah. for sure. So then when you see someone that you really like. Also really like Samaj P. Ryan though, so yeah. you know, take that for what but it is. But then I was listening to... Uh, he looked good when he was healthy. Hey, when P. Ryan he got a, his he carries. Had, he had it going. He's, oh, he's done he, okay. There comes bad reviews. People aren't going to like that. Well, And then I was well, also listening to Charlie Davis this morning on uh, Clay Travis outkick the coverage, and he was like talking about how you can find a running back in the third round because and who's that going to be this year you know who and then he was like who was touting kareem hunt out of toledo last er, when he was a rookie and i was like oh this guy right yeah. here mm-hmm. this guy right so you heard it here you did you did we and we'll continue there to was give some, you there stuff was some like kareem that. hunt love for sure um so then justice hill was, was obviously the, the the big spark guy out of out of this combine the big the big winner i suppose for he's got the fastest forty. That, that situation. Well, and he just he tested really well, pretty much everywhere else. He's got a good spider chart. Um, forty inch vert, very strong. One hundred thirty inch. So broad. explosive guy for sure. No three cone drill though. Yeah, well, good I mean, for him. He was already doing well across the board. Didn't need to yeah. tempt fate here. Right. Um, but I mean, again, if you watch the tape, that you know that it's he's clearly a very Twitchy bursty, guy. twitchy, agile guy um, shoots through holes, and, and he came in at a buck ninety eight, which is big time. Better, better than added eight what pounds you to that frame, and still ran the fastest forty. So he right. didn't lose any of that explosiveness. Actually, showed you more than maybe what you saw. I mean, it, that, those are really strong numbers that back right. up what you see on tape. But it's it's not doing much for me. Where I'm going to be like, oh, now I'm like where Miles Sanders got a big catapult. I'm sure Justice Hill is going to get some catapult, but he was. Not very high for most people, and I'm sure they'll he'll trickle up. But for me, there's not going to be much movement on on Justice Hill again. If he goes to a really favorable situation, then sure, give me all the Justice Hill. I love I, my big takeaways. I love the athletic upside of Justice Hill before this all, but I just wasn't sure. He's you know he's probably not going to be an every down workhorsey type of back. He's going to need to be in a committee, and it's going to need to be a good situation for him to be useful game in and then game out for fantasy wise he could be really good for your actual football team but fantasy production wise he's probably going to need to land in a really good situation to be very useful for you, you and, and maybe warrant where he's going to end up going in rookie drafts because of the way he just tested do you maybe move him up a, up above daryl henderson who tested worse than him across the board in all those measurements and Played on a, a less less good offense and had or less competition and had a bunch of big holes and yeah. you thought he was like super fast comes out I'm he's only four four nine probably sticking with Henderson yeah um, I think Henderson I could go Hill was did Henderson Henderson ran like a four three on one forty and then ran like a four Six five on something. another yeah. forty so he was kind of all over the place but they got official numbers yeah it's four four nine um, so I. I, I'm he still, is ten pounds heavier. I'm still going Daryl Henderson over Justice Hill for sure. Yeah, yeah. I could see maybe moving Hill up. I, I just I, I liked what I, I saw a little Hill, bit. Hill's more doing of, more from a running back standpoint. That Henderson is like just Rashad Penny through big holes. I mean that's 
that's fair. If that's we we've talked about that a yeah. decent amount, but I'm I'm sticking with Daryl. I like I like the frame a little better. I think he's a little bit more suited to get put into a, a little bit bigger of a role, and he's fine in the seemingly good in the passing game. Yeah. So is Justice Hill. Oh, for sure. That's but that I think that's what needs to be Justice Hill MO more so than Henderson's. I think Henderson can be a decent running back. I don't think he's going to be neither one of those guys I'm pegging to be. I'm not taking him nearly as high as anybody else because I'm right. not pegging either one of them to be uh, a guy who's getting the majority of the work for any team. Agreed. So that was kind of my just downgrade of both of those guys off the rip. I wasn't nearly as high as Henderson. Like Henderson was never anywhere near the top three for my running backs. No. Mm -mm. So no way. All right. So uh, any closing thoughts? Any more? Well, a couple more guys. Did did some more. Alex Barnes got some recognition over sure. the uh, throughout the combine process here. So uh, he he's pretty interesting. Haven't done a whole lot of studying on him, but a bigger guy, six foot two twenty six, um, but had had good numbers across the board. Yeah, I mean, I've watched a couple games. I haven't haven't done a ton of it. I I can't say I was like just wowed, but uh, it's only a couple games. Just that doesn't tell the whole story. And right. And I was watching a couple games on a few different guys so sometimes that can blend together so i'm sure. not i'm not ready to really speak to alex barnes but, but, a, definitely... but a, a low four cone and a or a low three cone <laughs> and uh yeah i gotta like the three not not too many good three cone drills this this go around no so. and it's, it was that's basically the sentiment of what happened over the, the course of the running back testing was that really none of them blew you away i.e miles sanders Right. jumping up there because the athletic testing was just not on par and then you know the receivers tested and everyone was oh the receivers right they finally gave us something good although that's cons everything you read is how weak this receiver class is for the nfl like yeah i don't know it seems like there's i feel, a I feel like it's pretty deep but deep, maybe yeah. not very top heavy so it seems like there's probably i don't know it seems like it's kind of top heavy and deep i don't know Yes, yeah, I, mean, I haven't I really, really have, I haven't really do, we haven't dove into it, so I right. hadn't, hadn't heard anybody hating on the receivers. But I mean, look at DJ Metcalf's three DK. cone drill, though. DK Metcalf, yeah, whatever. Oh well, yeah, just and he's got one point six percent body fat. That's not even healthy. I don't even know how that's even possible. Well, have you seen the pictures? I mean, I've seen the pictures, but I mean, there's that's that can't like you said. I watched this whole thing from a doctor that was telling me how bad it is to be that low a body percent, like fat, like how how well. it. it it hurts uh, with you being able to break down vitamins. You're going to have decreased strength and stamina. Like, NFL teams aren't going to want him playing at that body fat. Like, they're going to want – he's not going to last the whole season. Your body needs some fat. Now, it doesn't need as much fat as I've got, but <laughs> <laughs> it needs some fat. And then, it, like, he can't move from left to right. So, like, he just – he's, like, the best that this class has to offer from, it sounds like – from what people say, well, just, but just he can't from, move left or right. I think that's just from the the Maybe size, physically right. gifted, the, the best he's got. The to size offer. profile to go along with the speed profile. But I mean, I think there is other guys that AJ Browns and the Nikhil Harry, H Hakeem Butler's and the Nikhil Harry can't catch. And well, uh, that's a, I haven't seen it yet. I don't know. Right. I'm, I'm not. Saying I'm not that. speaking I'm just, on any of these things. This I'm is just what saying I heard. The general consensus of the overall top heaviness of this class. Of those guys are typically the guys that are up there and they seem to be by all accounts like big pretty fast really big they fast. Didn't, none of them really tested like terribly i don't think yeah it's just it just it's, it's all over the board and I'm like i don't know i don't know i haven't 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 studied them yet so yeah i'm excited to but i'm still going to take mostly running backs in this rookie draft so yeah i, I mean i again i ha haven't gotten into the the top round of receivers so i don't know if there's any guy or two that really stands out to me to be like oh yeah i really want this guy but for the most part yeah i'm probably going to be taking i want i still want jacobs and i still want montgomery yep up up there pretty high for me it'll be interesting i got two teams now i just made a trade this week so i got two teams with a one two in a rookie draft and interesting to for the running back only in the first round guys and for me i'm be i'm open I'm open to taking a wide receiver in the right place at the right time. Would you look at that? No Just way. Saying, it's, uh, this is NFL draft dependent, you know. It seems like there's some some guys who have like the prototypical size and and somewhat frame and speed in this draft where we maybe hadn't had that last year. It was more kind of 
odd sized guys. Well, still in Casey, like his mock drafts are the theme um, for NFL writers and stuff like that for the off season. And you'll have some people that, you know, by the time the NFL draft gets here, they're pumping out like mock draft 9.0 mm-hmm. kind of things. And they mean nothing. They're just entertaining. That's really all it is. It's but filler. when you see, when you see somebody's mock draft and you see a, one of the top end wide receivers and you see his name by the Colts, Something like that that's really fun, and you're like, okay, Andrew Luck and this big awesome receiver, I get it. You know what I mean? Like some, mm-hmm. it has hasn't happened yet, might yeah. not happen, but those things when the stars line up, I can, I'm open, I'm open, and I'm hoping for some fun in the NFL draft to plug these in. Last year we kind of had a little bit of womp womp with the landing spots across the board, even, and so this year I'm really looking forward to the NFL draft and see where some of these players land and their situations because it. You know, situations can make or break young players oh, in sure. the NFL. Uh, more so, uh, wide receivers than running backs, but more like most most players, really. It just situation yeah. and scheme fit and all that stuff just plays into things. That's it why just, we play dynasty, so you right. can grab a guy you like and wait a little while if you need right. to. Right, just because your guy For didn't. Me. Right, just because your guy didn't hit right away doesn't mean that he's a bad player. Like Rashad Penny, it doesn't mean that he's a bad player because it wasn't he wasn't on the field and didn't didn't get a shot. You know, Rojo, like we got, well, how many carries did he have? 20 some? Like, not many. Maybe he's not any good, but he was like the youngest running back drafted. And we just, and there's stats out there to say he got touched earliest in the backfield of any running back in right. the league. I mean, if you watch, that's what ha- he never really got like a great opportunity to showcase what he could do. Yeah. And he, they did say he was a little behind in training camp and wasn't quite picking everything up right away. And maybe he was a younger guy and didn't. Didn't quite get it, but I mean, the, not like the Bucks were over there. Yeah, the the uh, Bucks uh, they're starting their their franchise quarterback suspended to start right. the year. They're playing. I mean, their offense exploded with Ritzy Fitzy, but there's just so much going on over there. And then you got the youngest running back in the draft coming in there too. And yeah, it just didn't work out right. I got I got I hold out some hope on some Rojo. Sure. So it's it's just can situationally we, and all and scheme we, fit and all that kind of stuff is can we touch on benny snail before we get well, out that's of what i was gonna i was gonna okay. uh, all right i was gonna say kind of the other the other side of this is maybe some because the best thing that ever could have happened to benny snail's dynasty stock is it happened it went down and I don't know that three cone drill though. No, Bo. People that three oh, cone drill. Man, he's, he's stuck in the mud. Benny he, Snail. He ain't no good. It's Benny Snail, and I couldn't be yeah. happier. That's exactly oh, what we wanted. That's 100%. Exactly what we when, talked we, about. when we talked about him in the breakdown that we did, we said that he probably wasn't going to test well and it was probably going to get you even lower. And great. 466? Not is, the worst. Is Benny Snail going to be in my top three running backs? No. But do I have to take him maybe in the first round? No. Nope. That's right. That's you kind know, of that's kind that's, of what I'm getting at when I was talking about Miles Sanders. He's like in my top five. I don't bro. have to I don't have to take Miles Sanders. I'm gonna I can just keep trading back. We had the podcast episode last year after we did uh a draft with some of the guys that are dynasty people around the uh community here. The ultimate dynasty uh, podcast. Travis right? May and Dynasty Nerds and Under the Pod the Father in and, there. Uh, I don't know if they're in there anymore. I well, they, they were, were in there. Were. UTH yeah. was in there. There's um, the Dynasty Dynasty uh, Trade Dynasty Dummies were in there. Dynasty Trade Calculator. DHH was in there. Yeah, Tyler's so in there. We we did a bunch of trading back and still got carry on and picked up assets along the way, and that's kind of the way I would see something like a Benny Snell going for me in this upcoming draft. Yeah, and like it even to the point where the Benny Snell disrespects going. It's not where you have a pick at one three and you're looking at your options and you trade all the way back to two five to get Benny Snell. Like you just you can take who you you can back up in the in the draft if you want to, or you know move up from your late second round to early second round to get Benny Snell. You know, like it's not even like Carryon Johnson was always going late first round, even when he was disrespected last year. It was just us that were telling everybody to you can back up from one three and get carry on at one six one, through one ten and crush it yeah some people were saying carry on johnson right don't right. pretend like you didn't say that mm-hmm. well um so what was a super flex and we ended up trading all the way back from like two, one two, six got into to two, two two or something two one and then we we traded back to two two and the two one guy took him right is essentially what happened and then we, and then we traded had to trade for him mm-hmm. we had to give up a little extra to get back up to the two one but did we did what we, we had, had to do, do. mm-hmm um, so is there any let's we'll get back to Benny Snell in a second, but is there is there any other guys who maybe you were a little more excited about who who 
didn't perform well for you that you're still still down with? I mean, Rodney Anderson didn't obviously didn't do anything besides bench press, but right. They did give a they did compliment his physique while he was there. Right. I was everything you read about Rodney Anderson and, and things we've said too is that, you know, his combine medicals were gonna be huge and I, I can't find anything about his combine medicals. Don't know if they were good. Don't, didn't hear that they were bad, so right. that's probably a good thing. No news is good news. Right. Uh the fact that he was able to put up twenty five, I guess. Bench press is, is is good. It's it's impressive. I don't know if it means anything, but <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with his knee. Uh, so he is only six months removed from that ACL tear, which we believe is clean, but still no confirmation on that. Mm -hmm. And he said that he's going to be very cautious about any athletic testing moving forward. So he might not even do anything at his pro day. So just going to have to rely on what you saw on film. Crazy. Right. right. Which was a really good freaking running back. So, yeah. well, I think a guy I'd be. A really bullish on if if I, I didn't have any injury concerns about that knee. I, guess. I think if he didn't get hurt and would have continued to play, I think we'd be talking about Rodney Anderson as the one one here. I just th I think he would have been really solid. He'd, he'd be in the conversation. The hell of an eleven sure. game stretch there. Eight, eight. Sorry. Yeah. Um. So Elijah Holyfield bombed. Yeah. <laughs> but I hadn't really done any Elijah Holyfield and the stuff I watched. I, watched, I wasn't like super excited. No, about I mean it. I watched some games and it's. It's not hard to tell he can't get the edge. I mean, he, that's not his game, though. And he had, I think, seven catches over the course of his career. So mm -hmm. I don't know what people were so excited about before the combine, but now they freaking hate him. Yeah. So the other big losers would probably be Singletary and I guess Montgomery with the four six three and not a ton of other. I don't think he did great. Montgomery let you down a little bit from from a combine perspective, I guess. He didn't he didn't blow anything out of the run, water. Didn't run a three cone drill. Didn't want to continue to bomb slide I mean, slide slippery the broad's slide. not the worst it's 10 feet that's probably more than i can do but i mean <laughs> I should, i'm pretty sure it's a lot more than <laughs> you yeah, could do. do it three times and not get that far and a four six three i mean he looks i think a little faster than that on tape but that, that's so also it, not his game did but. that knock you did that knock montgomery out of the the top i don't know i think you might have been leaning more jacob's I could probably, of Montgomery I could, anyway but did it slide does it slide montgomery like does it give you uh, some pause of Montgomery, or I don't think it gives me any pause. I, I could maybe take Jacobs now. I think I could probably go ahead. This, and this guy doesn't at. test and right jumps jumps right. exactly up. right. Not cool. What I don't understand is how are these guys out here doing some of these testings like Singletary? How does he come out there and run the three cone drill? You there's no, how, how does he not know that his three cone drill is not going to be good? Right. right. And David Montgomery, if you think you're going to be over four six. And like, why run the 40? And you got a chance to be one of the first running backs drafted. Why run it? Bo, come there, do the bench press, and be like, ah, I got a little groin thing. Yeah. Isn't that what Jacob did? What, I don't even think Jacob's bench pressed, did he? I don't know. Let's see. Stomach bug. Yeah. Headache. Had some, had some bad chicken last night. Taxi. Wrong, wrong stadium. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Jacob's didn't do a dang thing. I've been to Indianapolis. It's, uh, yeah. You probably want to leave. <laughs> yeah. Real yeah. quick. You not you're not staying there in the off season if that's where you play. That's for sure. Mm. <laughs> Maybe Pat McAfee <laughs> seems to like it there. Yeah, he's a funny dude. So Montgomery still still number if he's not number one for you, which is Jacobs for you, is he still number two for you? Yeah, and I think all this did is that he's going to be available a little bit later in the first round. Now I think right. people are probably going to be a little out on him. They're going to be down because of his combine numbers, and I think I think now if you've got the one three or one four or one five, you still have a chance to get right. Montgomery. And I'm and I'm into that. For yeah, sure. Absolutely. Holler at me. I'll take it. Me too. I'm 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 still really high on Montgomery. Everything I saw on tape was everything I need to see out of a running back. Yeah, he didn't test that great. Oh well, happens. He could play football. Yeah, yeah. and you know what That's happened? All I know. Dalvin Cook didn't test well, and he still ran uh, a fast forty. Turned but. into a decent one five one six pick in their rookie drafts. Right. So I mean, again, haven't gotten into the receivers. I don't know if any one of those guys would be like, "Holy shnikes, need to have that guy." Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm I'm down with. I was never big on Singletary to begin with. Like nah. I, I, we haven't, we got some Singletary breakdown coming down for you with the Miles Sanders on Patreon on Saturday. But yeah, wasn't a huge fan. And I, we, I talked about it with you. I was like, I'd take Justice Hill over Singletary before they did this testing because I just thought there was more athletic upside to Justice Hill, and it, like I didn't need the combine to tell me that. Right. Um. And you, you didn't need the combine to know that that 
Singletary wasn't outrunning people. He right. he doesn't look that fast. He right. doesn't have long speed when you watch the film. So I wasn't surprised. I was surprised at the three cone drill. He does look pretty shifty, and I am he impressed does, but it's, with. I don't. I don't. Does it doesn't look like really fast shiftiness? It's, right. It's a little bit more smooth than, and he's kind of got that. A little force field ish kind of feel like yeah. Jacobs when we talked about him. Right. Uh, he he strings together multiple broken tackles. And does and a good job of dropping the shoulder and kind of letting people fall off good of him pad for level, a smaller guy. Yeah. Good pad level. So. And, 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 and to me, it's impressive to how tough he plays. Yeah. But then again, he's not playing anyone. Right. It's terrible competition. Right. And but I mean he looked okay when he played Oklahoma. I mean he, they were he made some guys up. but early in the game he made some guys miss that made that he was making plays that they were similar to other plays he was making, so I mean that was encouraging. But yeah, I mean he's like to me. I kind of compared him a little bit to Jamal Charles in a sense where he's small and can still get through the tackles, but he does, has none of that athleticism and no long speed to go with it. So he's mm-hmm. like a smaller, less explosive version, way less explosive version of. Uh, and I, so I don't know where, I don't know how his game is going to translate to the NFL. Wasn't asked to pass protect a ton, so I mean, like I'm not. Like you, you know, we weren't that high on Singletary. Everybody was just all over Singletary. And yeah. now I guess they're not because he was bad at the combine. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we're the highest people left on Devin Singletary. I don't think I'm so. still I down mean, to take him, but I'm still like Travion's still the, the highest up there for the smaller guys, the, the 200 club guys for me. Uh, he did he did everything I wanted to see on the field, played against good competition, was yeah. a good all around player. I liked his pass pro just fine. You were, didn't, didn't love it, uh, but. I'm still right up there with Travion at the leader of the 200 club. Yeah. I, Regardless I of the combine testing, which I think was just kind of middle of the road. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was okay. It so was, it was, it was, it was, it's okay. You want to wrap, wrap it up with a little bit more Snell talk. So you, everyone's still in on Snell. You guys aren't Snell. Yeah. Just got more exciting because we can just get him later. Got him cheaper. My, it's my thing is he ran a seven Oh seven three cone. And if, and another player that ran like a six nine nine, we're talking eight hundredths of a second, not eight tenths, we're eight hundredths of a second. And one player's good, but one player's bad, right? You know. And obviously, you're saying, "Oh, that's a decent three cone." Yeah, that's fine. But you guys were telling us you can see it in his film that he's good in short areas. He's he's nice and agile for the for the frame he's carrying, mm-hmm. which is a nice blend for the potential NFL running back. What right. we're looking for. And when you got a guy, I mean, we, I, I sat here right after y'all got through talking about Benny Snell and I said, when he's goes to the combine, he's not going to run a fast 40 right. and it's going to be fantastic because his NFL draft stock is going to be a little bit lower and his dynasty draft stock is probably going to go a lot lower. It's going to be, I'm, I'm, I don't think Benny Snell is going to be a second round NFL draft pick, mm-hmm. but depending on where he goes, if there's any light at the end of the tunnel for any time any any chance he gets on the field next year and of course with it with running backs he could be four deep and within two weeks they could all be on ir he could be in there you never know or he may not get to play at all but for a second round pick in my dynasty rookie draft i'm liking some benny snell some cheap benny snell right i mean he's got the college breakout age he's got the college dominator he's young as shit yeah, so how does that work? You got you got You're a good the college dominator, and you got a good breakout age because he had thousand yards every year he was there, and he's only twenty one. He just turned twenty one, I believe. But yet, you got a picture of a snail on his on his well, picture. So like because it didn't, there's other things that didn't line up for you. So if that if that doesn't work, then then you don't like the guy, and he's obviously not a fast, twitchy, explosive guy. That's so yeah. But if you're college dominator. Which is what these guys all point to is off the charts. It's in the ninetieth percentile. Like, what's your beef? What, what's your problem? Well, I'm telling you what the problem is. He just didn't. He didn't test. If he would have, if he would have tested like Alex Barnes, they everyone would have been really excited about Benny Snell. He would have moved way up. But, but I've seen people. I've seen analytics people like players that didn't necessarily test well, but had good college dominators and breakout agents. Yeah, I don't have the answer for you there. I'm sure somebody could I just, educate if you, you could, on that. If you could explain to me when you get to pick and choose what it is that you like about someone, right? then maybe I could help. that would help me use some of that to my benefit. But I, I just don't know what's good when. Like Zay Jones, all his, all his shit across the board is good. The metrics, the breakout age, the dominator, it's all fucking good. 
But yet he's the fucking worst. I don't get it. I don't understand. Like, I, I, explain to me. Because he caught a bunch of short passes. Like, I, I don't. I still don't get it. I right. still. I got cut up for oh, thirty minutes. I still don't get it. It's 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 the be all end all when it when they want it to be and when it doesn't fit to what they want. It's not just like film guys. You can do it. You can go either which way. Right. But at least there's some un open ended bot un like bias well, in this. The, you know, you can pick and choose what it is. Like the, I don't. I don't have a fucking formula that equals good. Like I have traits that I like to see in a guy, and I right. like. It's it's not a formula, okay? And that's I get somewhat it. what this what the combine I, can show you is maybe the traits that you liked didn't quite show up here, and and they if they showed up really poorly, then maybe you have to downgrade that guy. But I don't, I'm not any everything I knew about Benny Snell showed up on the combine. Like I I knew all that already, like, right? I didn't need that to tell me that he wasn't going to be uber athletic. So I'm fine with with Benny Snell. I I don't know what the reason is, but I'm sure somebody could enlighten us. We've asked. Why. We've went out there. You went. You took your lunch pail and your hard hat. You went out there and you asked. So if somebody wants to holler at us and uh, have a, a nice off-air analytics talk about what's important and what's not and how you come up with this stuff and just go over the, the gambit of, of the whole deal, I, I don't want you to explain to me the formulas and all that stuff. I don't need to know that. I just need somebody to, <laughs> you know, just go over why and what with me and let me get a better grasp on on how you guys approach things and maybe i can help you guys out with my stance and how i approach things so or any of us so. right all right well let's uh let's take a quick break and we'll be back with uh some last year's rookies versus some next year's rookies for your pleasure <laughs> <laughs> 